Alright guys, I got kind of a special one here today. Um, here in the shop we have a uh, custom solution that we're building for a, a customer locally here. And I uh, thought I'd go over the DJI expansion module uh, that you may have seen listed on their websites and, and various other websites including ourselves um, that claims to add manual switches to a DJI controller. And well here it is. So I'll go over the switches really quick here. Turn it around. Let's see if I can't. There we go. Okay. So plugs into a module in the back of the controller. If you have a um, M600 like like this one is here, it comes with a replacement module for the back that you have to replace. So you will indeed lose your 3G SDI port. You will retain your HDMI though. Uh, but it replaces the SDI port with a CAN bus port right here. So this module plugs into that CAN port. You end up getting a green light when you turn it on. And then you have these knobs and switches. Starting from left to right here, S1 is a clicky knob. I guess that's the technical term for it. Um, when you move the knob, it, it has little notches. And then when you get back to the center, if you guys can hear it, the controller will beep or chirp at you. S2 is a smooth knob, no notches in it. S3 is a three position switch. S4 is a spring loaded switch. S5, also a spring loaded switch. S6, three position switch. S7, smooth knob. S8, notched knob. Just like that. Alright, so let's say you've replaced your module, you've plugged this in, uh, you're done on the controller side. So how do you get those outputs? Well, let's go over to the copter really quick here. This is an M600 regular. Of course, remove the hood. If, the, if you have an M600 Pro, a little bit different, uh, different style hood, but same concept applies, you just have to remove the hood. And on the end of the A3 flight controller, you have your S ports. And you can see I just have servo extensions coming out temporarily at the moment. When I button this up for the customer, I'll end up routing everything down and through to make it uh, clean. Uh, but for testing purposes, I just have these um, thrown over the outside. So top is your ground, followed by your positive, followed by your signal wire. So this module over here enables your S1 through 8. So maybe I got that. Yeah. So there are, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Correction, 6 ports that it will activate for you. Um, there are indeed 8, but, you know, those first few are dedicated to the fan and uh, landing gear. So, can't use those. Anyway. Um, it's a standard 50 hertz or 400 hertz selectable uh, servo output uh, in the software, which I'm about to show you. Um, you can change your endpoints uh, versus uh, if you want your one end to be a thousand um, uh, thousand use uh, versus 2,000 use, um, or if you want it to be 1,500, basically servo in the middle position to 2,000, whatever it is you're plugging into that takes a PWM input, you can. Uh, select what you want that range to be. So in this case, and in a separate video, I'll show you more about the uh, the FiUtech View Gimbal, but that's what I'm using these outputs for right now. So in this case, these three wires are controlling your pan, your tilt, and your gimbal mode. And I'll go over that a little bit more in depth in, an, in another video. Um, Alright, so let's go over to my computer really quick. We've got the M600 plugged in via USB, and I've opened the DJI Assistant 2 software, and I'll just go back so you can see exactly how I got to here. So you open up uh, DJI Assistant, it recognizes that the M600's plugged into the computer. We're going to select DJI M600, we're going to go over to Tools. And as long as this is on the most recent firmware, which is 
down here, firmware update, then you should see tools. If you don't see tools, if you don't see um, you know, most of what is over here, then just make sure that you're up to date. And as well, I'll go back one here, I don't mean to confuse anybody, but version. In this case, as of it's June 2nd, 2017, if you can kind of see it on my computer, but I'm on version 1.1.2. And as of yesterday, that was the most recent DJI Assistant available. So make sure you're up to date. Anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about, the tools. So these will be um, fan and landing gear will be the only two that you will see initially. Then you have a bunch of drop-down boxes here. And... Uh, if you haven't set this up, they'll all be set to none. So in this case, I've set them to S1 through S8. The S1 through S8 corresponds to the controller. S1, S8. So in this case, I want, I'm using S1, S2, and S3 for the pan, tilt, and mode on the gimbal. So you'll notice S1, S2, and S3 is what I selected for my F3 port, my F4, and my F5 port. Pretty simple. So let's say I selected S1. I just want the clicky knob to be on F3. Now it does say spraying frequency. I can only assume that some of this software uh, technology is transferred over from the DJI Agris MG1. Um, but just disregard spraying and just focus on frequency. So you can see the US and the US for the for the ranges here. For example, I believe it came factory with 1120 for my uh, um, first range and 1920 for my second range. Typically, servo ranges are about 1000 to 2000 U's. So um, you could adjust it all the way from zero to 2500. Um, if you're going out of PWM range uh, for whatever reason, you know, for example, this is a spraying frequency, I would imagine that they use the same PWM frequency for their uh, injector nozzles on the Agris, but same difference. Um, let me grab the controller really quick and you can see this work in real time. Alright, monitor attached to it. Okay, so. Once you've selected S1 um, as your F3 port, you can look over here and see the bar moving left and right, depending on how I move the, the, uh, the knob, so on and so forth. Um, if you want it to be backwards or in reverse, there's a little checkbox for reverse. Um, I selected my direct output frequency to be 400 hertz. Um, if you're plugging in something a little bit more simple that just takes a standard 50 Hz uh, uh, servo input or PWM input, you can select that as well. Um, so basically, this is all the same for any of the other ports. I'll select this arrow here for my F4 port, same difference, same difference. And then I have my S6 and S5 controlling uh, the FLIR camera on the, uh, on the drone as well. Um, also. You will notice in your options you had, of course, S1 through 8, which correspond to the um, to the module that we put on the controller. But you also have this little shutter. So you select shutter. In this case, I have that set to my F8 port. This corresponds on the controller to your shutter button here. So when I hit that, you won't see any sort of output. It doesn't actually have a bar that goes left to right, but it does have this little tab up here. You know, we were just in function channels, and now I'm in shutter. And this is where you can define the range for that shutter that you set up here. Um, pretty similar to what you saw in the previous uh, tab. You've got your, your ranges, 2000, 1000, your frequency, um, and you also have frequency shutter PWM active. Um, in milliseconds. So when you press the button, it will go from 1,000 to 2,000 or vice versa um, for however long that you selected it for. So I press this button, it'll go from 1,000 to 2,000 
and then back for a second. Um, could be handy if you plugged in one of our uh, gent wire uh, cables for controlling other various different cameras or whatever shutter cable that you're plugging into it. You press a button, it, uh, it activates that uh, remote shutter for however long you want it to, and, uh, and then back again. Pretty simple. Um, so yeah, hopefully that kind of clarifies a, a few things, uh, especially for those that are going kind of out of the scope of what DJI offers with the M600. Uh, in this case, this customer has you know, kind of a bit of a, a custom setup, but uh, you know, thanks to the engineers at DJI for um, realizing customer needs, they came out with this module here and uh, really kind of opened up a bunch of doors for us as far as not having to have a separate uh, like Futaba or Spectrum controller that is dedicated to just the camera. Um, now we can use the Pilot's controller to control the same camera as almost if it was uh, DJI Factory. So, of course, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, please leave them below. Um, and, of course, if you have any other more technical comments that won't fit in a comment here on YouTube, uh, give us a call at 406-897-1027 uh, or just send me an email, support at quadrocopter.com. I'd be happy to make any of this possible for you. All right, have a great day, guys.